Hi everyone, I'm Esten Aydengaz, a film and media composer with a classical piano background. I'm a very proud alumna of Berkeley College of Music and I happen to be the current assistant chair of Berkeley's screen scoring department. I started playing the piano when I was four. I started out on a little keyboard, almost like a toy, that my grandfather got me. I pretty much grew up in Istanbul Music Festival, as my parents would always take me with them to whatever concert they ever went to. That's essentially how I fell in love with music and with the piano. In this episode of Virtual Orchestration, I will take you on a creative journey where we will carry a melody through different variations. The great thing about Piano for a Composer is that all the notes are visually in front of you in a very systematic and organized way. Plus, it also covers the entire orchestral register, which makes it way easier to bring your ideas to life and to help develop your themes with less limitations. I really love exploring different ways to get creative with my instrument. Let's get started! I came up with this very short and sentimental theme. As you know, the piano allows us to play beyond just melodies and enables us to also accompany ourselves. Let's hear the same melodic idea where I fill it out a little with some accompaniments. Suddenly, the melody carries more emotions, right? Now, let's hear the same thing, but bring both hands an octave lower. You can get so many colors by playing the same ideas in the different areas of your keyboard. I feel like this example had more depth compared to the first one. And it also feels more mature and serious. Maybe even darker. This is simply because of the lower notes I chose to use. There's something unconscious about how we perceive music, and we tend to associate lower notes with danger, darkness, heaviness, grief, etc. We could also have the exact same idea with a similar twist, where we keep the melody where it initially was, but bring the left hand pattern lower like this past example. Again, there's no right or wrong. You just explore with the octaves and decide which combination tells your story best. Or if you're not telling a story, just choose what sounds best to you in the moment. All previous accompanied examples had a two chord pattern where I altered between A minor and F major chords while having the lowest note B and A. If we want to get a little bit sophisticated, this is what we call a pedal note. Now, let me show you a different approach, where we keep the same melody and the same pattern, but use a different chord progression. So in this coming example, I will break free from the pedal note and have an ascending bass line, with a completely different harmonic progression. It's still pretty similar to the previous examples. And perhaps some of you didn't feel much of a difference. That's because the rhythmic structure and the arpeggiation pattern remained the same. Now, let's get more adventurous. This time, I'll not only change the harmony, but also change the left hand pattern. What I just did here is to come up with a less melody and more rhythmic structure, where I'm heavily relying on accents. I also changed the harmony a bit and had a descending bass line this time. Now, let me stick with this harmony 
bass line and melody and just alter the pattern to give you some more ideas. We were back to emotional land and it was more heartfelt, I think. Well, rhythm plays a huge role in the energy of the piece and having a calmer pattern instantly makes motifs sound more nostalgic and serene. Now, let's get into a bit of storytelling, shall we? I want this coming version to sound naughty, majestic, rebellious and royal. Almost as if a young queen is trying to escape from her palace but feels pretty good about escaping and is packing in her chamber or something. So, let me incorporate a tiny bit of jazz some cross-hand technique and some big fat low notes for her determination. I also did something different here, where I stayed away from the 8th note patterns and wrote a triplet feel instead. So instead of ta 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 ta, I did ta 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 which really helps with the drive. I'll continue with my explorations, but I'll give myself a little bit more freedom. So instead of keeping the melody exactly the same, I'll stick to the same melodic shape, but I'll play it in a surprising way. I'm shooting this video in October, so let me honor the spooky season and do a dark and halloween -y version. Let's go back to sentimental. A massive trick about creating more sentimental tracks is to stay away from the click and perform more with your instincts and inner timing. All the previous examples were recorded with a metronome and were performed as perfectly to the tempo grid as possible. So in this coming version, I'll shut the click off and perform more freely. I'll allow there to be pauses, hesitations and accelerations, which all bring a whole new aspect of musicality. I'll also utilize a more impressionistic left hand. I'll now do a version that starts like a lullaby and then gradually starts implementing a wider register and bigger dynamics. The more dynamic growth there is, the more expression our music has. I'll also use a different time signature this time. I'll do the first half in 5-4 and the second half in 4-4. I think you've heard enough sentimental versions by now. Let's do a more entertaining version, almost Broadway-like. In this version, I'll have a combination of thirds, fifths and octaves in the right hand and I'll also add grace notes to add to the fun. I will also use anticipations and delayed attacks to make it groovy. You can look those terms up if you don't know them. Also, up until now I always use the sustain pedal, but I'll get rid of it for this one. I'm personally such a big fan of the sustain pedal. I think it's the superpower of the piano. So just for comparison purposes, let's hear the same example with the sustain pedal. How we perform the attacks on the notes also makes a huge difference. Let's explore a common articulation, staccato, and see how it sounds on a piano. By the way, staccato means that a note is played shortly without holding. What about hearing the exact same part performed slightly differently in terms of the connectivity between the attacks? So this coming version will have a combination of staccato notes and held notes. I'm avoiding the pedal so that you can fully hear the difference. Do 
there is a million ways to arrange a piece for piano, and we've only covered the very tip of the iceberg. Using different time signatures, keys, tempos, rhythmic patterns, adding embellishments, using triadic harmony versus power chords or seventh chords, how you use the sustain pedal, how you use dynamics and accents, all of these things and many more play a massive role in how your piece turns out. Remember, any melodic idea can create any feeling or reflect any genre. I wanted to go a bit extreme, so here come some examples where I arranged the same melodic idea that we've been using throughout this video, but for different musical eras. It's my favorite. I also tried to get a bit post-romantic at the very end, cause why not? This last example is inspired by Eric Satie's Gymnopédie No. 1. Unlike the previous examples, this one will be significantly slower. Well, this is it from me for now. Tell me in the comments what you think and feel free to engage with us about how you use piano or let us know if you have any other related topics that you'd love to have covered in another video. See you in another episode of Virtual Orchestration. As a special treat, I'm putting all the examples I composed for this episode in music notation that you can download for free. This way, you can have a deeper look at what I actually did in each variation and play along if you wish. You can access the PDF in the info box of the video. Feel free to comment what you liked or didn't like and don't forget to hit subscribe.